Hey there folks and welcome back. Over the past few lessons we've been discussing limits of multivariable functions. Well now we're going to put our knowledge to use to discuss continuity for such functions. This once again corresponds to section 11.2 from our textbook. Before jumping into the new content, it'll be helpful to recall what it means for a single variable function to be continuous at a point. Intuitively, it means the graph of the function has no breaks. So take a look at this example here. At x equals a, the function is definitely not continuous. We have a major break in the graph. More formally, the issue is that as we approach a from the left, the value of the function is different than if we approach a from the right. The limits aren't matching up, and the limit doesn't exist at x equals a. If the limit doesn't exist, the function is definitely not going to be continuous. At x equals b, we again have a situation where the graph has a break, so it feels like the function should not be continuous. But the issue is not that the limit doesn't exist. As we approach from the left or from the right, we're coming into the same value. The problem, however, is that that value is not the value of our function at x equals b. So not only does the limit have to exist for continuity, it has to match the value of the function. At c, we have a similar problem. The function approaches the same values from the left and from the right, but the function isn't actually defined at x equals c. So again, we'll say the function is discontinuous there. At d, however, the situation looks a little bit better. The function is defined at that point and agrees with the left and right hand limits. So the limit exists and it's equal to the value of the function. We'll say that f is continuous at that point. For multivariable functions, the situation is very much the same. We can have discontinuities like the one that we had at b, where the limit as we approach a certain point exists, but it just doesn't match up with the value of the function. We could also have discontinuities like we have at a, where the limit doesn't exist at all. Take this function for example. If we approach 0, 0 from the lower part or from the upper part, we're going to get different values. So the limit doesn't exist, and the function is therefore discontinuous. Here's our formal definition for continuity of a scalar field. We'll say that a scalar field, z equals f of x, y, is continuous at some input a, b in its domain, meaning the function is definitely defined at that point, if the limit as x, y approaches a, b of f of x, y exists and is equal to f of a, b. Now let's check out some examples. All right, folks, here's a typical problem that you'll see when it comes to continuity. I give you a multivariable function, like for example, f of x, y equals x cubed minus y cubed divided by x squared plus y squared, and I ask, where is this function continuous? Well, notice that in this case, we have a rational function. It's a quotient of two polynomials involving x's and y's. Well, back in Calc 1, you probably learned that polynomials are always continuous, and rational functions are continuous on their domain. Well, the same is true here. You can take this as a fact. Fact, polynomials are continuous everywhere, and rational functions are continuous on their domain. So for this function, um, it's gonna be continuous in most places. f of x, y is continuous, except perhaps at zero, zero, because in that case, we would be dividing by zero. So it's continuous everywhere except perhaps 0, 0. Is it continuous at 0, 0? Well, no. The function isn't defined at 0, 0. So according to our definition, since 0, 0 is not a point in the domain, f of x, y is discontinuous there. So in conclusion, f of x, y is continuous on R2 minus the point 0, 0. Okay, I know this is kind of a simple example, but it serves to emphasize a point. A function can't be continuous at a point that's not in its domain. Now let's check out another example. Okay, now our last function was not continuous at the origin because it was not defined at the origin. But I've tried to fix that problem. I've defined a new function, g of x, y, that's equal to our old function for points away from 0, 0, and I've defined it to be 1 at 0, 0. Is it continuous now? Well, the function is still continuous at points away from the origin, right? Because at such points, the function is rational and those points are in the domain. So based on the fact from the last slide, it's continuous. So let's write this down. x cubed minus y cubed divided by x squared plus y squared is rational and it's defined for all a, b not equal to zero, zero. 
So g of x, y is definitely continuous at all a, b, not equal to 0, 0. But what about at the origin itself? We know that the function is defined there. It has a value of 1. But does that value match the limit as we approach the origin? We need to determine the limit as x, y approaches 0, 0 of g of x, y. If it's equal to 1, our function is continuous. Okay, well, this is now the same type of problem that we would have studied in our last few videos. We'll start by checking the value of the function along various paths. So what happens if we set, for example, um, y equal to 0, and we come into the origin along that line? Along the line y equals 0, well, we're going to get the limit as x0 goes to 0, 0, of x cubed minus 0 divided by x squared plus 0. Okay, well, the x's cancel out. We're left with the limit as x0 goes to 0, 0 of x, which is 0. Okay, now let's take a step back for a moment. We've just shown that along this path to the origin, my function approaches a value of 0. So really, there are two possibilities. Either we'll do some more calculations and we'll find that the limit doesn't exist, in which case the function is definitely discontinuous at the origin, or if the limit does exist, well then our function must approach the same value along every path to the origin, in which case the limit must be 0. The limit therefore would not agree with the value of our function at that point, so the function is again discontinuous. Based on these options, we can stop our calculation here. We don't need to figure out the limit. We know that in either case, the function will be discontinuous at the origin. As an exercise, I'll let you verify that this limit really does exist and is equal to zero. For now though, let's check out one more example. Okay, here's our last example, and again, it's a piecewise defined function. For inputs x, y not equal to zero, zero, we have this crazy looking thing e to the x squared plus y squared minus 1 divided by x squared plus y squared. And at the origin, the function is defined to be 1. Again, we'd like to know where is this function continuous? Well, note that this function is not a rational function, but it is the quotient of two very nice continuous functions. We know that the exponential function is continuous everywhere from calc 1, and we know that x squared plus y squared is continuous everywhere because it's a polynomial. So this quotient is going to be nice and continuous, except perhaps at 0, 0, because you can see here that we have a break in our function. So let's write all this down. Uh, since e to the x squared plus y squared minus 1 is continuous everywhere, and x squared plus y squared is continuous everywhere, h of x, y is going to be continuous on this piece. It's going to be continuous for all x, y not equal to 0, 0. To figure out if the function's continuous at the origin, we need to figure out if the limit, as we approach the origin, is equal to 1, the value of our function at that point. So we need to investigate this limit. Just like before, I'm going to start with a simple path to the origin just to get a feel for what's going on. Maybe again, I'll take the path y equals 0. Along this path, we're computing the limit as x0 goes to 0, 0 of e to the x squared plus 0 squared minus 1 divided by x squared plus 0 squared. So that gives me the limit as x0 goes to 0, 0 of e to the x squared minus 1 divided by x squared. Ooh, now how do you evaluate a limit like this? This limit, as x goes to 0, has the form 0 over 0, and it's a limit with just one variable. So we can use L'Hopital's rule. Note that there's no L'Hopital's rule for two variable functions, so we can only do this once we've reduced it down to just a single variable limit. Using L'Hopital's rule, we take the derivative of the top and of the bottom. We get 2x e to the x squared, using the chain rule, divided by 2x. Ah, now look at this. The two x's are going to cancel out, leaving me with just the limit as x0 goes to 0, 0 of e to the x squared. Now we can just plug it in. We get e to the 0, which is 1. Ah, so along this line, my limit really does match the value of my function. So maybe there's some hope here. Maybe the function really is continuous. If you'd like to check a few more paths as an exercise, I encourage you to do so. But you should find that along various paths, our function is still approaching a value of 1 as we move toward the origin. 
So on the next slide, I'm going to try the same trick we did in our last video by converting the polar coordinates to evaluate this limit. We're going to evaluate this limit by converting from Cartesian to polar coordinates. Notice that the term x squared plus y squared occurs throughout our function. Ah, but in polar coordinates, x squared plus y squared is exactly rho squared. So I could write this as the limit as rho goes to zero from the right of e to the rho squared minus one divided by rho squared. Notice this is just a single variable limit. We only have rows, no phi's. And since this is of the form zero over zero, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. If we use L'Hopital's rule, we're gonna get something very similar to what we saw on the last slide. We have the limit as rho goes to zero from the right of two rho e to the rho squared divided by two rho. The two rows are gonna cancel out. We're left with the limit as rho goes to zero from the right of e to the rho squared. And of course that's e to the zero, which is one. So sure enough, as x, y approaches the origin, our function h is approaching the value 1, which is h of 0, 0. We conclude that not only is our function continuous away from the origin, it's actually continuous at the origin as well. So our function is continuous on all of R2.